Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the Toasty Little Bitches. Claudia, it's- people are listening in the car with their kids. Okay, but what's the, like, you always yell at me when I curse at the beginning of the show. And, like, we curse in the middle of the show and you don't yell at me. I just said the word bitches. Like, well, because I feel like, you know, sometimes at the time people get into the middle of the episode, the kids have fallen asleep or they're out of the car. I just feel like to come in so hot. I just feel like you're out to get me and stifle my creativity. I feel like you're better than that. I feel like cursing. Uh, how about Jackie? You might feel like I'm better than that. I know that I'm not. Turdy. Don't do it to yourself. Happy Thursday, you little disgusting pieces of shit. How's that? I, I mouthed it. Pieces of shit. You thought we couldn't hear you, but we could hear you. Much like yesterday. All right. <clears throat> Welcome back to the toast and happy the Thursday. The fe- like, I'm just so over these kind intros, you know? Like, I want to be a nasty little wench. Are you angry? No, I'm not. So what is the reason for the season? Where's Positive Turdy? I don't know her. What happened? Because you're home from St. Bart's? No, nothing happened. I've been so busy this week. I guess that is what happens when you just take off for a week to go to St. Bart's. So I'm feeling good. I'm feeling fresh. I'm feeling hot. I don't know what you're talking about. What's with the gaslighting? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I'm feeling great because Bruno has decided to join me from the top of the show. And something happened last week while you were here where he said, I want to get back to work. The show needs me. And he also joined when we recorded Redheads yesterday, which was jolly good fun. And he's just podcasting his little tail off. How nice for you. Yeah, it is nice for me. How nice for you. You backed me into a corner. You've backed me into a corner, Turdy. I have. You've backed me into a corner. (laughs) Wait, also... I forgot to tell you this hilarious story. Oh, speaking of, yesterday on Patreon, I dropped a podcast episode. You could watch it or listen to it. It's a full St. Bart's recap. The first 30 minutes I did solo, just giving like my travel tips and tricks. And then Ben joined me for the second half, talking about our favorite moments, um, you know, him having the same shirt from Abercrombie as Jason Tardick, just a lot. And I totally forgot to tell the story, but I'm going to tell it now. One of the nights we got home, you know, we were we were a little saucy and we were going to bed and I was like just about to put my phone away. But you know, your phone like gives you memories yeah and it just gave me this memory of like literally like a dead theo like it was just from the probably like the two days before theo died it was like a really horrible picture i must have been sending it to a doctor or something you know yeah and i and i made the mistake of showing it to bed oh god (laughs) oh my god he was incontrollably wailing before bed so much so to the point like i was obviously getting teared up too because then we just started talking about theo but like he was so emotional like i was really like i couldn't handle it like i just closed my eyes and went to sleep (laughs) Oh my God. And I had like left Ben there so emotional when I was the one who made him that emotional. Yeah. Just just something something sweet about Turdy. Yeah. And the next morning he was like, what the fuck was that? I'm like, I'm sorry. I just like really couldn't handle your emotions. They were too much. So you would think that then you wouldn't. Bring it up. Yeah. Show him triggering photos. But what? We were supposed to forget about Theo? No. But you could look at him in happy times. Theo was so real. Like, Theo was the tits. Theo was everything to me. And me as well. Yeah. Rip King. Really uncool that he went and did that. Rip King. Rip King. Are you going to be okay? I'm fine. I'm fine. Me and Ben were like talking. I'm fine. Okay. Well, let's change subjects. Subjects? Yeah. Because we actually have... Bussing so Fast much. Five today. The and Fast so Five much to do. is on fire. Some of the stories Wait. were like left over from yesterday, but not any lesser in quality, just like we only can do five stories. I apologize. It's Wednesday, not Thursday. Ugh. I'm so sorry. That was beyond uncool of me. I'm kind of just like over keeping tracks of the days of the week. I love that. There's some days where I need to know the day because there are certain things that happen on certain of days course. for me. But beyond that, social contract. It also, it feels like it's just none of my business, you know? It's just giving social construct, like. Ugh, I love calling things social constructs, like, just because I don't like them, you know? (laughs) Yeah, like, let's delegitimize the days of the week. Take the power away from them. I love that. And let's take our power back. Yeah, because it's like, what, now all of a sudden we have to be angry because it's Wednesday instead of Thursday? Like, nothing actually changed. But everything changed, you know? (laughs) Yeah. You know. 
No. I, are you trying to tell me something? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> we're joking. We're being like funny. We have a podcast. We're like joking. Yeah. I just, you have so many secrets going on right now. I just oh don't God. know. What secrets do I have? You have your secret project. I have my secret project. Yeah. But what else? And I just like don't. It, that's what's hard about secrets. You're only a sickism. Like just keeping your lies apart. But in the words of Taylor Swift, what's that lyric? Secrets are a luxury or something? Secrets from Dear Reader. Jackie, what's the line? As your secrets. That's the words. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. That's the words. What's. <laughs> <laughs> What's the lyric? What is the lyric? As your secrets, when you aim at the devil, make sure you don't miss. What's the beginning of that line? I'm having like a Taylor Swift sized aneurysm. Ugh, now I'm just not gonna be able to think. No, just the greatest of luxuries is your secret. That's literally me this week. <laughs> literally you <laughs> this week. The greatest of luxuries is my secret. Not to overhype or anything. No, we're underhyping. The thing is, we so rarely keep secrets, like especially from the people, that when we have one, we have to hold on so tight to it. Even though lately we've been like doing that a lot recently, it's actually really annoying of us, me specifically. I told everyone the story that I got conned, but I wouldn't tell them exactly how I got conned. I haven't even told you yet. I told Olivia. She thought it was like an underwhelming story. She's like, you didn't get conned. You just like are a moron. Okay, fair, valid. Two, Friday. Oh. The thing is, I do mean to discuss with everyone, you know, in a vague sense, what went down. Yeah. Um, I have to set a call with our lawyer first. She begged me to speak with her before speaking to the toasters. And I've just been so busy in St. Barth that I never got to talk to the queen. Yeah, we so, need to know like what we can and cannot say, but we will share the story at some point. We didn't mean to leave you hanging. We just have to be on the phone with our seven attorneys, you know? There are seven of them. Yeah. And they're all working so we really hard. Also, I have to say, we have been keeping a lot of secrets lately. lately. Tro, you know? Tro, con, fry. Tro, con, fry. That's like such an inner like toast joke. Trocon fry. Yeah, it's starting now. Yeah, like if you know tro like trocon fry is the new RTK. You no, know? but yeah, yeah, yeah. But like all you had to do was listen to this episode to know trocon fry. Because you just explained all of them. It's so much deeper than that. Stop trying to delegitimize my inside joke, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I thought it's our inside joke. I feel like delegitimize is going to become one of my new favorite words, you know? It's a good one. Did I just say it about something earlier? You did, and that's why now it's in my brain, and I'll probably say it. Good. Just don't delegitimize anything pertaining to me. Also, I wanted to, you know, warn everyone. I did, prior to today's show, have a protein bar and a protein shake, because everybody's like, girl, you get so hungry, you need to eat more protein. So I had a pure protein shake and a bar Bear Bell protein bar, and I'm really feeling like I'll make it to the end of the show, because we have your toasters, it's gonna be a long one. I think I'll make it to the end without like feeling faint. Good. You gotta fuel up. This is a physical job. Speaking of physicality, I made a little bit of progress in our 5K training yesterday. I ran two miles, 2.1, because I know the 5K is 3.1. Mm -hmm. I ran 2.1 in 30 minutes, which I thought was fine. Yeah, that's great. 15 minute mile, more or less. Right, that feels really long, because I feel like I could walk a mile in 15 minutes. And how am I, I'm literally running. Mm. Jackie, I'm, I'm running. <laughs> And it's the same time as if I were walking. That's what I don't understand. Yeah, <coughs> that's a good point. When you run on the treadmill, what speed are you running at? Between five and six right now, I would say. Yeah, I guess that might be my problem. I'm, I'm running on like a four eight. No, that's fine. Okay, so like how am I literally running the same speed I would walk a mile? Well, because it's the average, so it, it's two miles. So, like, say you you didn't run both of them, so one the one mile is slowing down the other mile. Try and just go for one mile and see how quickly you could do it. It won't be; it'll be less than fifteen minutes. So I did that, and and I ran for thirteen minutes straight yesterday, and I hit about a mile. Okay, thirteen minute mile is good. I feel like 
I don't know why I have this idea of like an 11 minute mile. Oh, 11? I'm like seven. Oh, that's what you think it should be? That's like what I thought. Like what, miles are low key fucking long. Like who I gave feel them like permission? In the presidential fitness test, like it was giving 11 minute mile. The presidential fitness test was such a, like a load of shit. Really? Yeah, no, what was that? Like a nationally mandated like physical fitness test. Meanwhile, like everyone's obese. How does that make sense? Because they took it away, I think. No, I feel like they still have it. You think? I don't think that stuff would fly anymore. It's like low-key ableist. I guess amongst other things, you know, just no one really goes for that anymore. According to Peloton.com. I trust them as a trusted resource. It should take... An average non-competitive runner in decent shape averages a nine to 10 minute mile. Okay, so in between what we said. Okay, so we're above average. Not in a good way. We're below average. Yeah, but we're working on ourselves. But we are as described, non, what was it? Non-athletic. Non-competitive runner in decent shape. That's us. Oh, I'm not a runner though. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a runner. Mm. I'm not no, a competitive this, runner and I'm not a runner. In this instance, you are a runner because you are running. No, I don't think it's that's not what like a run, saying. I don't think it's runner with a capital R. I think it is. No, I think like you saying, are like, the runner. Runs. You are the runner in this instance. Anyone who attempts the run would be the runner. I see what you're saying, but I think you're um, like taking, taking, you know, the language. Like you need to read between the lines, you know? <laughs> <laughs> this is what I think. Yeah, many factors go into how fast a person runs a mile, including the length of the run. Are you running a one and done mile or are you going the distance in marathon? Exactly. Right, right, right. In the marathon, they don't run all of those miles in seven minutes. The fact that like I'm struggling to run a 5K and there are people out here running marathons is truly, it blows the mind. I don't think you're struggling to run a 5K. Like you, things you did, that, you've run it. Once. But you could do it again. But I don't want to. That's really, the, that's where, that's, therein lies, therein lies the issue. Yeah. yeah. Friends don't try to trick you. Get you on the phone and mind to twist you, you know? Yeah, that I know. That's her damn sure. <laughs> um, so let's talk about today's show. Mm -hmm. We've got the Fast Five, which you say are kind of stunning. Stunning, beautiful, 10 out of 10, across the board, 10s across the board. We've got Dear Toasters that made me chuckle. We have not heard back from Queenie with the condom. Damn. Everyone remembers that saga. Rats. Let's give her her time. These things take time, so mm -hmm. let's not pressure her. But if you're listening, we would absolutely love to hear from you. And it's not like we can write her an email and be like, hey, what happened? She writes in anonymously through the website, thetoastpodcast.com. She's really not trying to have her, yeah. her shit out there. So respect the anonymity. We can't, we, we don't know. So we'll, we'll hear back. But we do have submissions that made me absolutely chuckle today. Chuck, chuck, chuckle. Great. Yeah. So beyond that, what? You know? Yeah, I think we should get into the stories. I really, really do. Okay. But <gasps> two things. Sorry. The final episode of Love is Blind dropped last night. We will be watching today. We will be watching today. Are you all caught up on I the am. previous episodes? I am. Me too. We caught up last night. Great. So we're going to... Nothing. By the way, I have to say, they were some of the most boring episodes on the planet. Well, no. The, one, the first episode was good. With Chelsea... What'd she do? The fight on the terrace where she was oh. absolutely nuts. No, she was insufferably nuts. Also, the fight between Laura and Jeremy. I just love Laura. Oh, that pool party was great. The pool party was great. Actually, yeah, between AD and Sarah Ann, like... Did you feel, me and Ben, at the beginning of the whole Sarah Ann saga, when she was sitting there talking to AD, I kind of like heard her. I kind of understood, understood what she was saying. Like her message was as respectful as it could have been. Agreed she with that. I agree with she that. She didn't really pursue him. She sent the message right when she got out of the pods, just saying, if the door is still open, I'm here. Yeah. And Jeremy is completely in the wrong. Laura has every right to be upset with everyone. But I could see Sarah's perspective being like, I actually thought my message was respectful. I didn't reach out beyond that. Like I just sent it and, and let it go, you know? Yeah. I thought AD was like really judgmental and like kind of rude and just like patronizing. Yeah, she was. And I feel like she was just looking for a moment and just was trying yes. to be like the voice of everyone. But I did 
understand where Sarah was coming from. Obviously, it all played Sarah out lost me. really badly. But it is like she has the same opportunity as everyone there. Like they're all looking for the same thing. Like she thinks that she found it and she's going to try and see it through. It's on Jeremy to act right. Of course. So during the fight with AD, I was like, damn, am I on Team Sarah Ann? But then after that, she acted so unbelievably nuts. Like with the, she was like having a breakdown on the dock and like was so angry. And then like, literally he broke up with his fiance at this party. And then he like gets together with a girl like five minutes later. The whole thing, like after that, I was like, oh, I can't with these people. Yeah, I think by then they were just so over what everyone's going to say about them. Because I I think they felt, she felt like misjudged already when she maybe didn't deserve it. So it was like, oh, they're going to talk shit and they're going to hate me regardless. I'm going to go do what I want. Yeah, and I'm, I'm holding space, you know, for two truths. One is that, like, Laura is a queen. You know, we stand Laura. Um, but also, up until the, the jet ski thing, like, I, I saw where Sarah was coming from. Yeah, because the way I feel about Sarah is the way I feel about Jess. Like, if Jimmy exactly. had then wanted to get to know Jess, like, I would have cheered that on. So I have to be consistent in how I feel about the other woman because I do think that's a part – of the show it's like yes they could choose you and you can get engaged but you still have to get past meeting the other person that they were falling for yes it is a part of the journey and then trevor showed up and by the way who was i shipping with trevor first of all him and chelsea are perfect together but then he started talking to someone oh because he had, who was his backup laura laura well he said that he had liked laura for a time but she's kind of mean yeah. that's what he said about her and honestly like same like i like i love laura Love Laura. Not just because she's a toaster. No. Would have loved her anyway. But it doesn't hurt. And yeah. everyone is like loving her one-liners. Go kick rocks with open-toed shoes. Like who thinks of that? Yeah. I'm excited for tonight, though I don't think anyone is getting married. And I feel like the only couple that's together is actually Sarah Ann and Jeremy. Okay, I need to talk about Johnny and Amy. Because everybody's like, they're the number one couple. And I think people listening, people watching, viewers are like, if anyone's going to get married, it's going to be Johnny and Amy. And I don't think there's a more incompatible toxic couple than these two. When he was talking about getting a vasectomy, <laughs> I'm like, you're 12. Like, put a condom on. What? By the way, why hasn't the word condom been said in this conversation? No, it has been. He, like, is doesn't trust them enough. He doesn't think it's secure enough. Well, I don't think he needs a vasectomy. I think he needs therapy. Like, I think he needs, it's more of a mental trust thing. trust condoms? Like, it's 99.9% effective. Like, and if there's a 0 0.001 chance that yours is the one that doesn't work, like, you're obviously meant to have this child. Yeah, but also, you will know if, if it breaks. You can t check the condoms to see if it breaks. So if it breaks, then you can take plan B. Like, it's going to be she okay. Was, she said, like, she's been thinking about getting on birth control because of her condition. Maybe she has... Did she say what the condition was or like, did I miss that? I don't think so. I didn't hear a condition that I remember. I assumed like PCOS. Yeah, or endometriosis. Like there are a number right. of women's issues that could lead you or maybe, you know, really painful periods or something. But I don't know. It gave me a pit because like she's a grown woman and up until this point she hasn't been on birth control and now she's considering it because this freak. It gave me a pit too. And I thought the whole time when she first mentioned it, she was like, I don't want to be on birth control. I've never been on it. And I felt like she was going to stay in strong that. in her beliefs. Yeah. And then the results started to be like, she's thinking about birth control. Like that gave me the willies as much as- 100%. Like, I just feel like any time, whether you go on or go off because of a man, like it should be completely your choice. Yeah. And the fact that she was so principled in it, I actually had a lot of respect for her. Yeah. And- then hearing her say that, like my heart sank a little bit. And I think everybody's like, oh, Chelsea's the villain. Oh, Jeremy's the villain. Johnny is the villain of the show. I saw, I saw from day one, I dislike him so much. There's something wrong with him. There's something wrong that he's found who he says is the love of his life, his life's partner. He wants to get married. He wants to have a house. But like if they get pregnant even six months before he decides it's time, this is going to be a major issue for him. <laughs> okay. So much so that he won't have sex with Celibate. this woman that he loves. So much so like he's like the, the condom thing. Like, I'm sorry. It just to me, like I'm a very rational person. And to hear someone be so irrational it, it's hard for me to, to watch. Like, I can't watch their episodes, their scenes. Like, I can't. Yeah, they're also, like, pretty boring. But that yes. conversation is so shocking to me. And even outside of condoms, there are so many ways to track your cycle, track ovulation days, like, to do family planning or not and yep. without going on birth control if the woman, like, doesn't want to be on birth control. Yeah, no, I can't. I can't. Like, Johnny is my nemesis. He doesn't know it, but he has an enemy here in New York City. Yeah. I just get the willies from him. <laughs> 
Not the willies. The big time willies. Yikes. So we will watch the finale tonight and we'll do a big recap tomorrow. Ben is going to be so excited. Can't wait. Can't wait. Now, without further ado, it is time for the Fast Five Stories that you need to know. And the Fast Five Stories that you need to know are brought to you by Rakuten, the most rewarding way to shop and save because their members earn cash back on everything that they buy. Rakuten is a shopping platform that partners with over 3,500 stores across every category. That's beauty, clothing, electronics, home, department stores, pets, etc., You're already going to be shopping at your favorite stores. So why not be saving while doing it? It's truly a no brainer. So I've used Rakuten for many, many years. I shop online a lot. It's just something that I love to do. And I love doing things that get me money back. And Rakuten is one of those things. And they partner with so many stores that I shop at regularly, like Macy's, Sephora, Ulta, Adidas, I don't really shop there anymore, but I used to shop at Petco, eBay, Zappos, Expedia, really whatever. It's the smartest way to save money when you shop. You're getting cash back at all these stores and they cross over into a lot of categories like fashion, beauty, electronics, travel, dining, so much more. Um, The membership is free. It's easy to sign up. The cashback rates change daily. So start all your shopping at Rakuten.com or get the Rakuten app to start saving today because your cashback will really, really add up. One of my favorite places to shop, I feel like I shop there at least once a week. I'm always replenishing things, is Sephora. And as we all know, like as women, that truly adds up. So having Rakuten have your back is just everything and more. Start your shopping at Rakuten.com. That's R-A-K-U-T-E-N.com. Or get the Rakuten app to start saving today. Your cashback will really add up. Up. Today's episode is also brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one website platform for entrepreneurs to stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or managing a growing brand, Squarespace makes it easy to create a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything from products to content to time, all in one place and all on your own terms. So whatever your reasoning might be for wanting to start a website, Squarespace is the place to do it. It's super easy. I feel like websites can be really intimidating. I think a lot of people think you have to hire a really fancy company or have a degree. With Squarespace, their website templates are super flexible. So whatever you're trying to start a website, whether you have a portfolio you want to showcase, like you're a videographer, a photographer, a graphic designer, or whatever, you want to showcase your work, you can do that. You want to create an e-commerce website, sell stuff. You have a side business, you work in e-commerce. You can create a website where you can actually like have transactions and sell your things. You can sell custom merch. You can um, drive sales and engage with your audience through email campaigns. They'll give you analytics that will help you grow your business. You can use those insights, learn where your visits are coming from, learn where your sales are coming from, analyze which channels are most effective, improve your website, yada, yada. Whatever you could possibly need for a website, Squarespace has got you covered. It is so easy and we've got you covered because you can check out squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash toast to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. That is squarespace, S-Q-U-A-R-E-S-P-A-C-E dot com slash toast and you will save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain after you get that free trial at squarespace.com. Once you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash toast. Now, Jacqui, I heard through the rumor reel that you had something you wanted to say. I do. Today's episode is also brought to you by Dreamland Baby. So I love Dreamland Baby baby sleeping products, including one of their most popular products, which is the Dream Weighted Sleep Sack. It is great for newborn babies. And as they get older, it can change with them. When they're newborn, they can do full swaddle or one arm out or both arms out. It has weighted technology. So it provides for the baby what a weighted blanket provides for you. Helps them fall asleep faster, stay asleep longer. We absolutely love ours and it is just a dream. So we have a great code for you guys. If you go to Dreamland Baby Co., dot com and enter our code toast at checkout you will receive 20 percent off site-wide plus free shipping this offer is for new and existing customers so again if you are struggling with baby sleep and you think you've tried everything you absolutely have to try the dreamland baby sleep sack they also have the sweep sleep swaddle for younger babies but you know once they are rolling over you go to the sack sack yo and dreamland has a great one so again that is dreamlandbabyco.com and enter our code toast for 20 percent off thank you Jax. i feel like dreamland is one of those products that you discovered via the toast and like truly changed your life like i remember when you first used it for charlie because i didn't discover it with harry until he was bigger Right. And by then, like, we had good... A schedule. A pretty good schedule in place. So it's, it was a great sleep sack. But, like, when I first put it on Charlie, I was like, oh, this right. rocks. You rock. Thank you, Bla. This next story 
I want to say rocks? rocks because it the tea is so hot, but it doesn't. Oh, but it doesn't oh. rock. It doesn't rock because it's freaking weird. Oh wait, what are you talking about? Noah Cyrus and Dominic oh. Purcell were. Quote, I thought you were talking about Jess from Love Is Blind and Harry Jones. No, that rocks all around. I have thoughts. This first story, there's drama within the Cyrus family. I think there's been a couple things over the last few weeks and months that people have been like, what's going on? Noah wasn't at the Grammys with her big sis Miley. Brandy was there. Tish was there. And as we know, like the, the Swirlies have been very close. Yeah. And also Tish recently got married and like some of the kids weren't there. I don't think Noah was there. Yeah. And then, of course, Billy Ray is out of the picture, too. Oh. Who knows if this has any if that has anything to do with all of this. But uh, people reported on Friday that actually Noah Cyrus, the younger sister of Miley Cyrus and Dominic Parcell, the new husband, new of husband, Tish Cyrus, the mother. Mm -hmm. that Noah and Dominic had been seeing each other and ended things before he entered, entered a relationship with her mom, Tish Cyrus. A source told People on Friday that Noah, who's 24, was offended that her mother, who's 56, married the prison break actor, who's 54, after he and the singer had previously hooked up. The source says Noah and Dominic were seeing each other in a friends with benefits way off and on. They stopped seeing each other and then Tish started something up. Tish knew he had been seeing Noah, says the source. So I want to say a few things. This is all speculative. And I'm going to... If this is... If this is not true, and I pray on my knees every night before <laughs> bed <laughs> that it's not. If this is not true, then like what's going on with the Cyrus girls? If this is true, like this is one of the most disgusting, vile, really seriously should be illegal things on the planet. Like I'm puking in my mouth. It's so fucking disgusting. It's so insane. <laughs> I want to believe it's not true. Agreed. Hey, Jackie. Like, praying. Jackie, seriously, like, cross my heart, hope to die. Please, I pray this is not true. Praying, hoping, dreaming <laughs> that this is April Fool's. Jackie, I hope you're somewhere praying. I'm praying. I hope your soul is changing. So just know, like, that's where we are. We're praying this isn't true, but we have to, for the sake of the show, like, talk about it. Talk like it about. Is. The possibility that it is true. And I feel like if it weren't true, you know, the people would come forward and be like, whoa, the, the fuck? Like, no, this this is not true. I feel like even Noah herself might say that even though they're all on the outs because it's just a bad look for everyone. No, no, no. Because now I'm like, I'm judging everyone. Miley, like, how could you not take your sister's side? So apparently today it came out, Miley had, someone said, Miley had no idea about the drama with Dominic. No idea at all. She confronted her mom about it. She thinks it's a strange situation, but she loves her mom and wants her to be happy. So like, what, say Miley didn't know, which it's like, do these people talk? How, yeah, no, I don't know how you don't and know why, that. And then why does Miley think, like, why isn't Noah talking to mom? Like, did she ask? Why, what would, why would Miley, what would Miley be doing if she saw that Noah wasn't at her mom's wedding? Right. So, it's really. Vomitron. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know what? I was so funny because I was actually going to say this removes me, reminds me like Noah and the mom of Heartbreakers, Sigourney Weaver and a young Jennifer Love Hewitt. But then I also was going to say my favorite line. I feel like vomiting. I feel like vomiting. I do. <laughs> I do too. But the thing is like. No, it's Tish, giving Sigourney Weaver. Tish and Dominic are married. I know. It's, it's too late. It's too late. And I have to say, like, before this whole vomit-inducing saga, I actually like, really liked this as a couple. I thought it was, like, really age-appropriate and cute. Love that she married someone else famous after Billy Ray. And that, like, she had said she watched the show and had the biggest crush on him. And, like, how fun to bury your crush. Yeah. But now, nothing about this is cute. And then it's also, like, what was he doing hooking up with Noah? He's sick. Half 30 his years age. Younger. Half? Well, yeah, no, sorry. Exactly half. <laughs> Never mind. No, a little more than half. Like, yeah, more than half. Yeah, like 52% older. 55%. <laughs> it's sick. It's sick. You're right. Like, now I'm looking at him differently, too. Like, and first of all, like, there is just something, and I'm sorry, this might offend people who have, like, hooked up with the same person as their sister or whatever. Siblings or anyone being related. I never even think parents and daughters. I think siblings. Siblings, like, fucking the same person. It's gross. Yucky. Yucky. It's giving incest 
Yeah, it's just, it's icky, sticky, icky, icky, bubble sticky, gum. sticky bubble gum. Icky, icky, sti- like. But in some situations, like, it's just a case of bad timing. And maybe the next person, like, say, you know, Kim, Courtney, Travis. Say that's true. Oh, right, right, right. Say that's true. Like, I don't think it means that Courtney and Travis shouldn't be together. I think it's just like an icky, sticky bubblegum thing that is always going to be there. I'm talking about sex, though. Like, if you made out with someone and then, like, your sibling ends up, like, dating him, like, that's fine. Right? Not ideal. Like, I would... I would, I would try to avoid that, but if if that be, winds up being your person, like, totally fine, totally fine. Love wins. <laughs> <laughs> it does. But like, I think as a general rule of thumb, and we had this rule in our house growing up, like yep. if one of us was even so much as interested, interested in someone, like had a crush on someone, like you couldn't even look their way, and the thing, and we never did. We never did. Except. I'm going to text it to you because I'm not going to forsake this part. Do you know who I'm talking about? I think I know who you're talking about. I think I know who you're, who you're talking about. Hold on. I'm on my yeah, way. Yeah. I'm on my Wait, way. I'm, I'm on my way. Hold on. I'm texting. But I, I, there. I texted yeah, it to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, So let me tell you, like, that's literally 10 that years, was, ap- yeah, 10 years apart. It, it was 10 years apart. Like, we're all different people. 100%. Great. Um, that's that's how you know there's one instance. And by the way, we're ashamed of it. No, and, and it's, it's like me. it's not me. It's and, not me. I wasn't involved. Also, like we're four girls. We're in a very like small community. The fact uh-huh. that there's one ten years Jackie, apart. Like there we, are only so many like eligible, alive Jewish, you know, age appropriate men. It was bound to happen, and it wasn't bad. You're right. It was, it's it, ten years apart, and there's one. Ten I'll years take apart. It. There's there's one, and like. One was so not serious and one was like somewhat serious. Right. And also it's like that, but neither, it's not like that person, you know, is in the family now. No, no, no. We're, oh yeah. By the way, let's not start rumors. That would be so messed up. I dated Zach Weinreb in high school. <laughs> <laughs> like yucky. Yucky. Now, Jackie, <laughs> picture that. But it's your mother. Sick. And it was These like literally, sick. I think, and by the way, a few weeks difference. And I just want to say, this is one of the things that gives Hollywood like a really bad name. Like, you know, there are all these conspiracy theories about people in Hollywood like eat babies and they do like seances and they're evil Wiccans. And, you know, most of that's not true. But every now and then they do something so disgusting like this. And you're like, well, you know what? Maybe they are eating babies. Well, I feel like when I think of the Cyrus family, I don't think of classic Hollywood tale. But they are like they are Hollywood. Miley's one of the biggest pop stars in the world. I know. They just feel like kind of like outsiders to me. But when I do think yeah, of like... Yeah, because they're Southern and they live in Tennessee. No. Yeah, but they also kind of just like march to the beat of their own drum. But when I do think of like, you know, devilish, eaten baby Behavior. sort of thing. Like, no, Osiris. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, she sold herself to the babies. She definitely sold her soul. Yeah. Okay, wait. <laughs> also, you know who I want to hear from in this saga? Please read my mind. Um, I mean, there's so many people I want to hear from. So. Just guess. Like Billy, Noah, Miley, Tish, Brandy. Trace. <laughs> Trace. When she doesn't like this, will you do it like that? Remember, what was that band called? Metro, Metro North. Yeah. I want to hear from him. Whose side is he on? Well, was he at the Grammys with Miley? I think he was. This is tough because I feel like Miley, especially like I know you're having a moment with her, but I really feel like she's having a moment of like true career peakdom. Yeah. And like this disgusting family incest drama is embarrassing and it's bringing her down. It is. It's sick. Yeah. It's really sick. I think she has a new song called Doctor. L O L. They need a doctor. She needs to call an ambulance. Call an ambulance for her mother. And the sister, like, how? And I guess that would make like no. No one didn't do anything wrong. I know, but like, it's icky sticky. Like, I don't know. She literally didn't do anything wrong. She was like having fun. Like, thought it was cool to be like fucking a fifty-year-old. Not a crime. She's twenty-four. Like, she's of age. Yeah, I don't know. The whole thing. The whole thing. Our next story is actually a decent segue because speaking of relationships with an age gap, 
Kristen yes. Cavallari oh. is clapping back. I, by the way, I keep almost guessing the wrong stories. I thought well, you were going to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what happens when, like, you know what the stories are going to be. Like, you keep oh. waiting for your story, but. For mine. But just let the process unfold. Let the chips fall oh, where, where they, they may. may. Yeah. Kristen Cavallari is clapping back at criticism over her dating a 24 year old. So. Kristen Cavallari announced last week that she has a new man. His name is Mark Estes. He is 24 years old. She posted about him on TikTok. And then she posted another video of herself lip syncing, a voiceover of a woman saying, so what are you going to do about it? Are you going to arrest me? Are you going to give me a ticket? Um, and then the caption was like, when they're all up in arms and I'm dating a 24-year-old. And... So I have a lot to say, and I need to explain something to you that I feel I fear you don't know about. This. I think I about the Montana boys. Yes. Okay. I'm so glad you know. He comes so from a content house. He like he is a part of like a high pass type, which is like a content house. He lives in in a house with a bunch of other like cowboys who are also TikTokers. I don't know. Um, so Kristen Cavallari dating this extremely good looking 24 year old does not bother me. Like I'm so like you had your kids, you're successful, you're divorced, you're single, like girl. Yeah, fuck the hot child. Love that for you. Like, truly, truly love that. Like, I'm not even joking. Like, get it, girl. Get it. Like, you're literally gorgeous. You could pull, like, get it. The fact that this really hot 24-year-old is a part of, like, a content house, like, that's where I draw the line. What kind of content do he and his housemates make? Like, dancing? Crin no, like, yeah, like, cringe. It's giving, you know, the Sway Boys, remember them? Yeah, like. Where they made, like, sexy, like, lips, like, like that. But, but these they boys are, like, country cowboys. Music. They do it all to country music. That's better. Yeah, and they go outside sometimes and like, you know, do it in the fields. Okay, and... I just know they're bringing their tripod out with them to the fields and it's like, it's just, it's not giving authentic. And did he, he just graduated from college. Some, I've seen, like he was playing college football. Did he like, um, get held back? Who graduates at college at 24? Maybe he took a gap year. Like, I, I thought you graduate when you're 21. 21 or 22. Okay, so... And then maybe, you know, super senior. 23. And, and like, okay, that's just graduating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, the thing is, like, do I think these two are the great loves? No, like, she's just having fun. Like, I actually genuinely love that for her. But the TikTok content, like, does give me pause. That's all I'll say. For sure, she's just having fun. But I feel like it's a little more serious than that if she's posting him. Like, she's dated a couple people since she got divorced. And I don't think she was ever public with anyone. Like, she's taken yeah, this, this public. Yeah, but this, because this person, like, is public. Like, they have a TikTok. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like she's getting a lot of attention from it. I feel like it's, like, good for her podcast. It's good for her Instagram. It's good for her TikTok. Like, I think she's probably, like, leaning in. I, I don't think it's that serious of a relationship, honestly. How, yeah. Jackie. And Jackie, he, Jackie, how can it be? He just graduated college <laughs> after seven years. Like, <laughs> And he lives with his friends. Like, he has roommates. Right. right in a content house. Like, and, like, I think there, I saw there was a TV on the floor. Ooh, not the TV on the you floor. You know, it was giving like no headboard. Yeah, b mattress in the corner. Like frat house. Yeah, flag. And this is a woman of esteem. This is a woman, you know, in a who has a mansion. Like, did she go over there? Did she sleep? No. Well, I saw her there because they all made a TikTok together. I saw it. She like came out the back. She actually looked like so cute. No, like, and it's by the way, fun. You know, like I could be a hater. Like, I don't know if Kristen Cavallari knows like she and I have beef and like, I could be a hater, but the thing is, like, I'm a, like, I get it. Like, I get it. He's extremely good looking. Just like, have fun. He is. Yeah, have fun. I, I, I thought it was like cute. It didn't bother me. Nobody's getting hurt. No. But you know, like the women who follow Chris and Cavallari are like older women who used to watch Laguna Beach or whatever, or like you know, people fans of her reality show, and they're like these judgmental Karens on Facebook. Like, yeah, I can't believe you're dating. Like, they're like that's who's that's who the backlash is from. Yeah, the people commenting. Okay. Well. Do you, boo. Do you. Our next story, some more relationship news that Turdy has been waiting for. Which one? Love is Blind star Jessica Vestal had a romantic Mexico romp with Harry Jowsey recently. So Jessica got paparazzi was photographed having a romantic romp with Too Hot to Handle star Harry Jowsey months after she entered the pods in photos obtained by Page Six. The mom of one and Harry were seen packing on the PDA while enjoying time in the sun on the beach. She... Um, and he lovingly held on to each other as they spent time together in the clear blue water. You guys have to see the pictures. They're very, like, coupley. They're kissing, hugging. And I don't know. What are your thoughts? What are your I thoughts like on it. Harry Jowsey in general? 
I like him. I think he's like super funny. I loved him on the show that he was on that brought him to start. I'm too hot to handle. Um, and ever since then, I've actually found it really interesting how he's sort of become this star. He works a lot with Netflix. He has a podcast. Like, I think he's super He's very successful, and too. He's very successful. I have no problems with him. I actually like him. Um, for Jess, no. What about like for Mr. Right Now? Fine. Not as father of autumn. Right. That's the thing. What what have we been saying this whole time? Like none of the men on that show were really man enough for Jess. She's this sort of. I don't even know what the word is. She's just this whole lot of woman. Yeah. And it takes it's going to take someone serious. And I love Harry Jowsey. I wouldn't say he's a serious person. I don't know. I feel like he has it in him. I expect that this will be just like a fun for now sort of thing. But I wouldn't count them out. Like, I feel like it could be a good match. Don't count out the Countess. I feel like it could be a match. It also could not be, but like, I like this. I'm not crazy about it. But I did feel like, speaking of that episode, she had that conversation with Jimmy. She's still like, I think, in this place where she doesn't really know him that well and she doesn't know that he's the, the right guy for her so she's still really open but there's only one episode left like what do you think happens with them she's done with him yeah yeah she's not like chasing him down or anything like I think that she knew that he's not the right person for her even though like she wanted him to be and I think maybe if he had chosen her maybe they would have gotten together but I, I still think that they each of them can find a better match for themselves like I don't think they are right for each other unfortunately Okay. But maybe if they had chosen each, if he had chosen her, like, they could have made it work. For the time being, yeah. Yeah, but it's not a perfect match. It wasn't a perfect okay. match. Okay. Yeah, I thought she handled it really, really respectfully. Like, and also honestly, like, I still have a crush on you, duh. Like, but. Right. You know, not trying to be like, I'm still here if you want me. Sarah Ann. Yeah. Because also, who wants to be second best? I know it's like and it's at some point it's like your ego gets involved yeah but I think a lot of people make the wrong choice in the pods for whatever reason you're literally like you can't even see the person can't see their no, mannerisms it's crazy it's so hard and also I think these people act differently in the pods than they do in real life like yes. look at Kenneth I can't, by the way, that's one of the things I'm actually genuinely looking forward to at the reunion like that's something I need answers on yeah like two different Kenneth. people I mean even Chelsea Chelsea that fight yeah. was something else something else and I didn't really realize until he said it that she was so drunk yeah I'm like she's being nuts but like she's been nuts this whole time yeah and then he was like you're you're drunk and I was like oh my god yes she's drunk she is drunk but it's like if that's how you're gonna get when you're drunk then you shouldn't drink oh my god facts on facts like you're gonna ruin your relation like that's the kind of drunk that you are like whiny naggy like picking oh. a fight like don't drink but it's so interesting because I feel like we've all been waiting to see who Chelsea was talking about when she was like you fucked her I know you did I was so not expecting it to be one of the female friends yeah and when G when Jimmy was like listen I told you that like in the spirit of transparency in our relationship and I asked you not to bring that up on camera to me that would be um that would be a deal breaker for me. If, so, if I told somebody something in confidence off camera and we're in a relationship and we're going through this together and so I'm trying to be honest with you. So I tell you something about my life off camera that I don't want to talk about because it involves someone else and the first thing you do is the next day you get drunk and you say it. To me, that's like you're not protecting me. Like I would yeah. be so out. It, it's like not even, I don't care how much I love the person. Goodbye. So out. I totally agree. And he had so many outs and like I could not believe that he didn't take the out. I know. When then they sat down to like really fully break up uh -huh. and then they did it. She wheeled him back in. I was like this whole time I like so now I actually thought that episode was really good for Jimmy because now I'm like believing remember how he said like he tells her he loves her and that she's his first choice blah blah and like I don't believe him mm -hmm. but now I believe him because like he could have gone and he didn't so Ben and I have been so confused and for like the last couple of episodes we keep looking at each other and we're like I think Jimmy's telling the truth like I think he likes Chelsea yeah I don't know like he's so confusing he's taking this all the way he is taking this all the way and if they when they break up like he will not be the villain in this story. I actually think that he's handled himself really well. I know, but people are so weird because so much of like the feedback I've seen online is like, Jimmy's the worst, Jimmy's the worst. Like, I don't think Jimmy has seriously done one thing wrong. Was it not like the nicest thing that he said his favorite thing about her was her teeth? Like, yeah. But like, I don't think he's gone out of his way to be malicious. No, not at all. 
given like the situation he got himself into, I, I'm so confused by him. I actually think he's like a sweet guy. I think he's a sweet guy. I feel like people think Jimmy's the, they say that because it's like, he's not the greatest. He's not like the funniest or the most interesting. And they just kind of find him like Boring. milk toast. But yeah, I don't think he's the worst. No, me neither. Yeah. So Jess and Harry Jowsey, like, we'll see. I don't think this is, you know, the end all be all, but. We'll yeah. See. But I'm glad she's having fun. This is the time. Yeah. This is her time. Everything's coming up, Jess. Everything's coming up, Jess. Yeah. So it's a good first choice, honestly. I agree. Next story. Some more new couple news. Four or five. Four. Great. Luann Delaseps and Mary-Kate Olsen's ex-husband, Olivier Zarkazi, spark romance rumors as they enjoy a cozy two-hour date in New York City this i begged jackie to include this like this you didn't even have to beg like this is is my roman empire yeah i really these two are perfect together oh they are made for made for each other made for each other happy for her obviously happy for him like she's jackie these two are made for each other colon famous couples throughout history yeah i they i i don't know how many dates it's been maybe it's just been the one but i feel as though this will be the beginning of a long and beautiful relationship i need to look at these pictures again because like it was genuinely too much for me but the thing is and i know what people some people are going to say like how are luann de Lesseps and mary kate olsen dating the same guy now this guy never should have been married to mary kate olsen like in my opinion they were always a mismatch mm-hmm and he should have always, always, always been married to Luanda Lesseps. Like Agreed. he's literally a combination, this guy, Olivier, of the Count and Jacques. And he's 54, just so you know. And uh, Love. Luan is 58. Oh, so an older man. I mean, an, an older woman. Yeah, but they're the perfect I'm couple. I'm trying to figure out. Oh, they were at Bill Bouquet. Mm -hmm. Classic Luan de Lesseps spot. Yeah. And, you know, now I can speak freely about this because it was so long ago and I moved out of that building. Um, when Mary-Kate Olsen was going through a divorce with this guy, she must have known, like, had a friend who lived in my building who, like, never used the apartment because she moved in there for quite some time. I never even saw her. Ben saw her chain-smoking cigarettes outside. And I would, like, always volunteer to go walk Theo, rest in peace, you know, to, the, to him because I'm like, maybe she'll be outside smoking a cig. I never caught her, but she lived in the building for quite quite a while the staff said she was absolutely lovely you know a couple complaints about cigarette smoke upstairs but for the most part they had really nice things to say i'm glad yeah that was like a really exciting time to be me except you never saw her no but like but just, every morning the, i was like chance, excited the possibility to, like, to leave for the day to take the elevator i would like offer to take the trash out like it was just it was an exciting time things were brimming with possibility Probably an exciting time for Ben, you doing all of these things. Maybe he made it up that he saw her just to get you to do those things. Oh my God, no, because I would talk to the doorman about it. You should it. do they, that. They you should tell him like Carmelo Anthony has moved into your building and yeah, then be like, oh, take the trash out. Maybe you'll see him. He wouldn't believe me because Carmelo Anthony hasn't played for the New York Knicks in 30 years. But <laughs> Who's the I big think Knicks? G Barrett. What's his name? RJ Barrett? Or Julian? Julie, do the Julius guy. No, no, I already, Julius Randall, I already played a prank on Ben. RJ Barrett, and Ben is obsessed with him. Yeah, say that you heard he moved into the building and then just like send him on all these errands for you so he could try and see him. I just like, seriously, like, I love Luann de Lesseps. Like, I think she's one of the greatest women of our time. I, and I have loved her for so long. And this is just like another, for me, like another notch in her belt of queendom. Yeah, I mean, he's not Kevin Costner. But it'll do. But it'll do. It'll do. It'll do. I love. Yeah. And Bill Bouquet is the perfect place. Also, just like a fun fact about the building that I used to live in that like, I've always wanted to talk about. You know, Naomi Campbell, when she threw her cell phone, it was in that building. Hmm. Anything uh, like iconic turdy memory in the building? I mean, everything. Everything. But like, what will they say? Like, oh, Claudia Asher used to live here and this is where. She lived in this building when she sold that Madison Square Garden. That's what they'd say. That's a good one. Hopefully, yeah. Or um, I feel like, yeah, no, I didn't have any like crazy emergencies, you know, I never called the cops or an ambulance. Yeah. There was no fire. Thank God. COVID. That, this is where Claudia Ashe quarantined. quarantined. Yeah, sad. <laughs> Are you ready for our fifth and final story? If it's the fifth and final story that's brought to you by Maiden Form, is that so? It is so. 
Okay. M by Maiden Form. Get a taste of M, a hot new collection of craveable intimates from Maiden Form, a brand with a whole lot of history. They've been around since the very first bras, and now they're bringing you a new kind of classic, the chicest basics you've ever seen. So M is a collection from Maiden Form. Uh, Maiden Form is a brand with 100 years of innovation and category leadership. They basically wrote the book on bras, and M is the next chapter. You're going to have to feel it to believe it. It's yummy, buttery, soft fabric, and they feel way more expensive than they are. It's great style, but it won't break the bank. Their on-trend designs are made from stretchy, comfortable fabrics, and they come in incredible colors. M can be worn as innerwear or outerwear. You can style it to your taste, and you can create looks that serve for all or none to see. So I am very specific about underwear and bras. I feel like when it comes to actual material, I need to be comfortable, but you know, I need to stretch. And what I loved about Made It Form is the first time I touched it, so stretchy, so soft, and not like thick. Thin, really perfection. You have to feel it to, to know what I'm talking about. And I love their bras because I'm always looking for what I like to call my indoor bras um, that, you know, I'm not going to wear for a jog, obviously, but I'm not one of those girls who can just like walk around and like not wear a bra. The ones from N by Maiden Forum have great support. They're so comfortable. No digging. I love them. Visit MadeInform.com and use code TOAST20 to, at checkout for 20% off your first purchase. That's M-A-I-D-E-N-F-O-R-M.com, code TOAST20, that's T-O-A-S-T-2-0, for 20% off your first order. Today's episode is also brought to you by Haya. Typical children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They're filled with two teaspoons of sugar, unhealthy chemicals, and other gummy junk that growing kids just shouldn't eat. And that's why Haya was created, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin. While most children's vitamins are filled with five grams of sugar and can contribute to a variety of health issues, Haya is made with zero sugar and zero gummy junk, yet it tastes great and is perfect for picky eaters. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full-body nourishment that our kids need with a yummy taste that they love. It's formulated with the help of nutritional experts. Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies and then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, which includes vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. It's non-GMO, it's vegan, it's dairy-free, it's allergy-free, it's gluten-free, it's nut-free, and everything else that you can imagine. It's designed for kids of all ages and it's sent straight to your door so parents have one less thing to worry about. My niece, uh, Michaela, favorite time of day is high health. She takes it right before bed. It's like the most exciting part of her day. I don't think she realizes she's being supercharged with vitamins. To her, it's just like a fun activity and a delicious treat. She loves it. Your kids will love it. We've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, you must go to HayaHealth.com slash toast. The deal is not available on the regular website, only at H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H.com slash toast to get your kids the full body nourishment that they need to grow into healthy adults. Today's episode is also brought to you by Armora. Oh my God, every, literally the name on everybody's lips, it feels, is Armora. True. We are always on the lookout for ways to strengthen immunity, improve our fitness and metabolism, elevate our skin. And we've recently discovered an incredible product slash brand called Armora. So I forget where I saw it at first. I feel like maybe on TikTok, everyone's talking about Armora. Colostrum, that's what it is. And it is the first nutrition that we receive in life. It contains all the essential nutrients that we need in order to thrive. And Armora is a proprietary concept trait of bovine colostrum that harnesses over 400 functional nutrients to strengthen your immune barriers and fuel cellular health for a host of research-backed benefits. Armora colostrum strengthens immunity, it ignites your metabolism, it fortifies your gut health, and it activates your hair growth and skin radiance, and it powers fitness performance and recovery. So a lot of the benefits are it can reactivate your hair growth, it can make your skin glow, it will fuel your fitness performance and your recovery, and it'll fortify your gut health and ignite your metabolism. We have worked out a special offer for our audience to receive 15% off their first order. Go to tryarmora.com slash toast and enter toast to get 15% off your first order. That's T-R-Y-A-R rmra.com slash toast try armora.com slash t-o-a-s-t t-r-y-a-r-m-r-a.com slash toast armora is sustainably sourced ton of different benefits everyone's talking about it get on the train thank you claudia the armora train our fifth and final story is an expose on the queer eyes so oh i'm familiar rolling stone has put out an article talking about queer eye dynamics as they head into their next season um inside the tensions and tumult at queer eye queer eye has a new member after bobby burke's departure as sources claim long-standing tension among the group and alleged 
rage issues with star Jonathan Van Ness. So there are a lot of accusations and just interesting damning tidbits uh, in this article, sort of about the conception of the show, how the five guys got together, the Fab Five, how things were in the beginning, but how over the last few seasons, like they kind of can't stand each other. No, and the show was supposed to end last year. Like they were sick of each other. I don't know one person that watches this show. It was a cultural phenomenon the first season, a little bit so the second season. And they keep winning Emmys. I've never heard of anybody watching the show. They keep getting renewed. And they were finally going to end it last year. But because of the writer's strike, the Netflix like needed content immediately. Yeah. So they just renewed everybody's contract for four years. Right. Except I think the last season was really like the most difficult to film in terms of personalities. I think some of them wouldn't even film together. It was really hot where they were filming. It's like a schedule from like September to June of filming. And, um, you know, so they don't love doing it. And Bobby Burke, like, stuck with not wanting to do it anymore and didn't resign his contract but he didn't know that like no one else was going to and meanwhile Anthony and Tan, Tan. Like, um nominated their friend who's an interior designer to take over for Bobby it was a little yeah, bit so, like subversion yeah Bobby didn't sign the contract with the general understanding that nobody else was going to but he was also just like prepared to leave and I think Tan and Anthony are the only two who are actually friends with one another yeah and they wanted their friend Jeremiah Brent to be the new Bobby. So they let Bobby think that, you know, we're not resigning. Boom, two years later, I have two seconds later, everybody's resigning and there's a new Bobby and his name is Jeremiah. Yeah, well, I do think it's best for Bobby that he goes. I think also, you know, what's become like a meme on the internet of like Bobby works so hard and Anthony Karamo like- gives a, Karamo gives a pep talk. Karamo gives a pep talk and Anthony slices an avocado and yeah. they all get the airtime because Bobby's actually doing work and like we're not gonna see him like sawing wood, yeah. but he's working the hardest to turn around a house in four days. Like I think that actually started to wear on him according to for the sure. article because that is very real he's working harder than anyone he doesn't get he as should much be paid screen. more no not even but he's probably getting paid less because he doesn't get as much screen time which means that he'll never like be the fan favorite but the breakout star from the show was Jonathan Van Ness yep. and the meat of the article is how this is a nasty person yeah really bad and they even went as far as to say like honestly none of them are, are beyond pleasant they all rose to you know fame really quickly they're these kind of like divas and that's to be expected but Given JVN's behavior, it's like the rest of them are angels. Yeah, I think the rest have expected diva behavior, but this is what the article says. Other members could also be difficult at moments, but Van Ness stood out in terms of unprofessionalism with his various moods dictating how the day would go, two sources say. Quote, when he comes on set, everything changes if he's in a bad mood. Working with him is very difficult in any capacity. His alleged two-faced behavior was disappointing, a third production source says. Quote, as much as he wants to do... As much good as he wants to do in the world, I think a lot of it is very hypocritical. There's a definite contrast between the principles and the values that Jonathan stands for publicly. They're really centered around having this warmth, love, and care for other people. Mm -hmm. There's a real contrast between that and the way that they treat the people who are closest to them across the board. It's the opposite of what this person is touted and paid to be. Don't you find Yikes. that it's always the always. people who Ellen. are like, sunshine, friendship, Ellen. love. Ellen. Ellen. It's giving Ellen who are she the She ended nastiest. her show every day. Every day she would end the show for what, 20 years? And don't forget, be kind to one another. And then she'd go back and slap someone. Like, it's always the person whose like brand is kindness, love, joy, charity, empathy. Like, it's so while it should be the most shocking that it was JV, if, because if you were to say which one of these is going to be like the nastiest bitch, you really wouldn't have guessed JVN, but it's always the JVN. Yeah. Yeah, so much so that production like had to talk to him at one point. They said nothing changed after that. And you know what? I'd like to thank Rolling Stone because I feel like there has been, so, especially since Bobby Burke left, there have been so many questions about the Queer Eye guys, especially like their friendships with one another. One of them got married. All were Only one was invited on the bachelor party. People are always like doing their own research and digging like, what the fuck is up with Queer Eye? Thank you, Rolling Stone, for like actually doing an investigative piece on something someone was curious about you know like we're all wondering thank you yeah and they described it that it's like a boy band except these boy like men were mm. brought together it late like in their 30s and you're asking yeah. them to like be best friends and it's like they're all different people who maybe wouldn't have chose each other as friends plus you have the added element of stardom yep. and competitiveness Money. and they have big personalities and yeah there's always going to be like people who are the favorites and get special treatment and then people who resent that Especially 1000%. when that person is so nasty. Yeah, 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 yeah. What I also thought was interesting at the bottom of the article, they were saying why um, people were surprised that they still do the show, even though it's oh, like me. not what it was. 
Some speculate that despite the infighting and the tensions, the other members agreed to return to Queer Eye because it serves as the main vehicle to keep their stardom afloat and support their separate ventures. Yeah, some of, of which are floundering. So Tan France's next in fashion competition show with co-host Gigi Hadid stalled after two seasons on Netflix, and he recently launched his own production company. JVN's popular podcast, Getting Curious, was refitted into a docuseries on Netflix, which has gone dark after one season. Oh my God, I didn't realize his podcast was over. The main backer for their JVN hair care line went bankrupt, with the brand offloading it at a stunningly low price of $1.25 million. Yes, there was a huge, like people were freaking out about the JVN hair thing, because I actually use JVN hair, like it's pretty legit. Like, and and so for his, um, sorry, their company to get acquired for people were shocked at 1.25 million. Like it was really, really low. But the thing is, is like they all, sh like I remember because I, I was doing comedy the same time as JVN started doing comedy after I think like the first or second season. And JVN did uh, Radio City and it was like the biggest deal. And that's just like, that's just the nature of fame. Like you're never going to be at the top of your game for so, so, so long. Like I feel like they all struck while the iron was hot. Yeah. And the iron's not hot. Yeah. Yeah. But you would hope that while the iron's hot, you like set something up so that like that's yes. your thing now. And that happens all the time. That's not specific to Queer Eye. That's anyone who goes on reality TV, like use that moment to build something that will last and even though it's never going to maybe be as big as it once was, like, it's enough. No, you have to think about also, like, the OG Queer Eye guys. Like, the only one that I feel like is currently famous and whose name I think I even know is Carson Kressley. Like, and he's been hustling his entire career. Like, you you just don't get eternal fame easily. Yeah, yeah. So this was very interesting. Yeah. And I wonder, like, what JVN is gonna do because now these allegations are out there and when you think about like JVN's fandom it's like people who like would be mad about this like it's very um it's internet peeps you know yeah yeah they're not gonna be happy about this no and they're not gonna like let this be like oh JVN is misunderstood they're gonna be like we want accountability yeah they're gonna want accountability and I wonder if he'll hold himself accountable I know I feel like JVN's the type of person to do that but that you think so you think he will admit guilt? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. And like on what platform? What do you think would be I think he still has a podcast. It was really popular. It was. J V N. Those three initials, man. No, they were they launched a, a nation. Yeah. Oh, he still has this podcast. Yeah. Jax, 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 Jax. They. I checked. It's they, he, and she. Oh. It's all oh, okay, of them. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry. Yeah, I thought you're it was not just gonna they. catch me out misusing pronouns. It's Look not gonna happen. It's Go all of queen. the above. Go off, Queen. Go off. Okay, but like also just like all of them. Yeah, no. Is I, Jackie, seriously, I have a career to protect. Leave me alone. Okay. Leave me alone. Just gonna, just gonna go with it, okay? Let's go with it. But anyways, yeah, you tried to, you tried to call me out. It's not gonna work. No, no, I j sorry, I'm really sorry. Because the article said they, and I thought it was just they. No, I checked because there was a lot of pronouns swirling around. S girly swirling around? They were curly swirling around the article. Okay. Whew. Whew. <laughs> All right, next up, we have got Dear Toasters, our weekly advice segment where the girly swirlies write in and we do our absolute best to help them. Once a week, every Wednesday, you can write in deartoasters at gmail.com or head over to our website, thetoastpodcast.com and see what we can do for you, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. Hello, my queens. To get to the point quickly, my gay friend and his husband approached me to be a surrogate for them. I already have a child with my husband, so it would not be my first pregnancy. I would be getting a huge amount of money and using a donor egg, so I have no ties to the child, but my husband does not want me to do it. He wants us to have another baby, but the reason we have not gotten pregnant again is because of money. If I do the surrogate, we would be in such a better financial place to have a baby of our own. So do I forget about the surrogacy because my husband isn't fully on board, or do I consider this actually for the financial future of my family? So I have to say something because I, when I read this, I immediately wanted to share something Brian Kelly once told me because he obviously used a surrogate and he learned a lot about surrogacy and he was like, it's really hard to become a surrogate 
and doing it for the money like is really not what is that sound are you heavy breathing oh no it's bruno snoring across the room oh my god jackie i thought you were pumping maybe oh my god no he's sitting with the flamingos and snoring but you can hear it because my computer okay. volume but i don't think the mic can pick it up but if you can hear it it's my angel snoring i was like are you using a cpap <laughs> no honestly bruno needs a cpap you should see the way that I, i'm going to take a, a little video you need to see the way he's sleeping like it's too much maybe we'll post it to our reels maybe we'll post it to our reels Okay, so what I was going to say was that Brian learned a lot about the surrogacy like journey and he was like in order to become a surrogacy and and like the real the surrog women who become surrogates they do it because they love it. Like you have to have this sort of desire. Doing it for the money is actually like a really really bad reason for doing it because it's much harder than you expect. And you know with a regular pregnancy it's super tough but you know that there's this thing waiting for you. Mm -hmm. With a surrogacy there's really not anything waiting well, for money you. So you, right but you get paid already like you get paid throughout like you have to do it for the love of the the journey doing it for the money is like a really bad reason to do it they they the women get like extensive they go through therapy they get like extensively interviewed it's really not a reason so that's all i'll say that's very interesting so then should surrogates like not get paid beyond what it no. costs all right calm down calm down no we no, you know what should. i mean they should they should of course they i think that they should and i do think you need to have reasons other than the money including the fact that like this is your best friend and, and you're going to give them a child and i feel like that could be motivating too but, yeah, but she didn't even mention that she was really just coming at it from a financial perspective so yeah i don't know that this isn't something like we can tell you or even your husband can tell you it's true because this is a major major decision and i feel like there are other ways to make money and if it's really about the money and you want to have another child like there are just there are other things you can do too you don't it doesn't mean you have to become a surrogate or you'll never like get your hands on that money and usually like when we're talking about you know things our husband has have opinions on i'm always like their opinion is irrelevant they're dumb nothing they say matters do what you want you 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 i actually feel like a husband has a right to an opinion here now it's not like the most it's not going to be the end one. all and be all and that's he makes the decision but, but you have to consider his feelings matter too, yeah. A thousand percent. Especially because like it's not just like, I don't want you to be pregnant. It's like, no, because I want to have another child with you. Like, it's not right. for nothing. Right. And I don't know, I'm slightly concerned that not once in this submission did you mention how good it would make you feel to give this gift to your friend. Like, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I'm actually, like, no one can tell you what to do, but if I absolutely had to, I would tell you not to do it. Yeah. And because, by the way, they obviously... These, this is a couple of means. Like if they can pay you a lot of money, they can pay, pay you know, a professional surrogate too. That's true. So like I want this couple to have a baby. I don't want to take the baby away from this couple. But like I don't know if it should necessarily be you. I don't. It's just like it's such a huge thing. Yeah, I think you might even be like underestimating how yeah, huge it like, is. Yeah, like oh, okay. Just because you're blinded by the money and yeah. you've been pregnant before. Yeah, I, I could see that. Our next year toasters is really unlike anything I've ever um, heard. And it's a tough spot, okay? Mm -hmm. Hey, girlies. My really good friend is my hairstylist. Her husband passed away. And since then, the quality of her cuts are just getting progressively worse. <laughs> I keep going strictly out of friendship and knowing that she probably needs the money. I've tried to be more vocal, bringing in photos. I did space them out more and my hair looks better the further from the appointment that I get. But afterwards, I feel so disheartened about how it looks. I feel terrible that she's going through such a hard time, but it's starting to take a toll on my hair. What is the right thing to do here? I think that you first of all how often are you getting your hair cut like really I get my hair cut like three or four times a year okay yeah I feel like that's a normal amount of time to get your hair cut and how but it seems like there's been a number of bad haircuts how long is she like actually in the throes of grieving that she can't do her job but if this continues to be an issue like all of a sudden she lost her hair cutting powers right um, like her like uh, what's Samson yeah like Samson I would go to her for a haircut say like just a trim so that you trim. can support her and be there for her and then you know next week book a proper haircut down the street I completely agree like seriously say I want a one inch trim no layers like say nothing you don't yeah. want anything creative and that's you being a good friend and yeah you can't you can't say anything no you can't leave no it's, it's, this is this is your way of supporting a friend financially like that's who needs you that it is what it is it is what it is and that's actually really good advice that Jackie gave you thank you like half an inch yeah like just quick trim 
Quick or honestly, trim. like just a blowout. Oh my god! Be like, yes. I'm growing my hair out. Can I get a, just a blowout and then go get your hair cut? Oh my god, brilliant! Or even That's a get brilliant your, beyond brilliant idea. Or even get your hair cut right before and be like, look how healthy my hair is looking. I'm gonna keep growing it just to blow out, please. Yeah. Or like something harmless, like a gl- like a, a clear gloss, you know. Like if you really want to give her the money. Oh, what is what's a clear gloss? It just makes like your uh, uh, your hair shiny. Have you ever done that? No, but I've been told um, by my hairstylist who's fabulous. Like if I ever feel like my hair is getting dull, a clear is it called a clear gloss? Yeah, yeah. That's right. Um, I think you can get one that's like not clear if you color your hair, but like a clear gloss just makes it like a nice and little shiny. Pretty, but you have shiny hair. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just know it's a thing. I've never gotten one. I swear. Oh my god! Imagine oh, that was your big secret. I, no, I swear to God. Because people never always are commenting on how shiny your hair is, and it's just God given. I hate to be so annoying, but it is. Like I don't do anything crazy. Maybe it's because you yeah. don't do anything crazy. Perhaps untouched by man. Untouched by man. Our third and final dear toasters. Dear toasters, am I being judgy? My husband and I have been married for five years. He's very rough and tough. He's into all things outdoors, like hunting, fishing, hiking, etc. Hunting, I was driving fishing, it. and loving every day. Early morning in the evening. Okay. I was driving his car last week, <laughs> and I found tanning goggles in his car. I asked him about them, and he admitted that he goes to the tanning beds occasionally. When he told me that, I immediately got the ick and I feel weird about him going to a tanning bed. I know it's his body and his decision, but please tell me that like I need to get over it. But how? Icky, sticky, 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 bubble gum. <laughs> bubble gum. Bubble gum. Uh, this is different. This is different. So obviously it's icky, but it's also not really a healthy habit. True, you can always come at it from that angle. UV, cancer, you know, et cetera, melanoma. Yeah, but like, what is he doing? No, I'm sorry. It's like, so fraudulent. I just, And also like to tan frequently enough that you have your own goggles. And is there in your pickup truck and like because you want to look more outdoorsy than you are. Oh, I didn't are. even put that together. Yeah, like he wants to have that natural glow. Like I've been spending Fraud. so much time outside. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I want to see. Is this her husband or her boyfriend? Because if it's a boyfriend, they have to break up. No, it's her husband. Okay. It's not. It's definitely deal breaker for a boyfriend, but like you're married. So like it's good. Um, okay. On the other hand, like it's not everyone entitled to their vices and their guilty pleasures and their bad behavior. That's not hurting anyone. Well, it is hurting someone. His skin. Like seriously. I think if you really wanted to get him to stop, you could A come at it from the health angle like give really some pamphlets so bad for you two you could offer to tan with him in the real world to tan with him yeah outdoors like it's not amazing but it's better than the bed yeah i think you should approach it from like this is a bad habit not an icky habit like this is an unhealthy habit that we should help you break i implore you to use the word hazardous to your health yeah, look up some facts, melanoma. I mean, it shouldn't be hard. They're so bad for what you. What if he says, okay, I want to start getting spray tans. Oh, fuck. You know what? I'm so glad that you had that thought. I feel like men That's wouldn't want to. What? Yeah, because they see it as like makeup. They see it as makeup. It's smelly. Most men don't like the smell of spray tans. And they think of it as like orange. Yeah, yeah, but he could. Or no, so okay, if he wants a spray tan, be like, okay, great, super healthy. And then you book him the worst, most orange spray tan in town. And you tell the girl who's doing it, like, make it horrible. Yeah. Give her a little extra. Cash on the side. And he'll never want one again. Yeah. The thing is, like, I get it. Do you know how many times I've really just wanted to, like, go to a tanning bed once a week? Do you know how much better my life would be if I had a consistent year-round, like, real tan, not spray? Like, and I hold myself back. And I live a public life. Like, I'm on camera every day. So if I can hold myself back, your fucking husband can, okay? Oh, it's not even something that ever crosses my mind. Oh, my God. It crosses my mind all the time. Really? Yeah. Have you ever been in one? Yes, once. When? Like, a million years ago. It was, like, low-key scary. I'm like, am I, what if I get stuck in here? Yeah, it, that is scary. Like, a hyperbaric chamber, it felt like. That, yeah, I feel like you wouldn't like that. No, it actually genuinely felt like a coffin. So for that reason, you shouldn't want one anyway. 
Yeah, but let me tell you, like, do you ever just think about, you go 15 minutes, like, once a week. You're for always really tan. Like, not spread, real tan. I never... You go in naked, like it's everywhere. I've never thought about it, honestly. And I don't want to because it's like, I don't, I'm missing something I don't even know Oh my about. God, no, I think about it all the time. I need like Elon, somebody to make one that's like really good for you. I feel like Elon could. It's just like he's... He's busy he's solving larger problems. Like, no, I'm not, I'm not saying this is an, an important problem, but like, if, unless you could get it to a place where like it would affect the future of civilization, like he's not going to put his mind to it. I know, but I need someone maybe a little less smart and like socially conscious than Elon. I need someone in tech to work on this. It's, it's really, I'm telling you, if you made like an actually, it doesn't have to be like good for you, but not horrible, like yeah. cancerous tanning bed. Oh my God, I would be an investor. Like I would do anything for that. You know who I feel like could do it? Let me think. Who like works in beauty tech? I don't know who. Bridget Mendler. Thousand percent. You know who I, I thought you were going to say? I feel like this could, it wouldn't because it's not a part of like Korean beauty standard. I actually like was watching a video once on Korean beauty standard, how they really value like pale skin. Yeah. But if being tan was like a beauty like a valuable beauty standard in Korea, they would have made it. Because Korean beauty is the best. It's like so good for you. It's magic, yada, yada. They would have done it. Yeah. I need the Koreans on this ASAP. But maybe there's a reason that they don't. They haven't. Yeah. I feel like also Elizabeth Holmes could have done it if we hadn't stopped her. If we hadn't like squashed out her spirit and her yeah. creativity. If we hadn't crushed her ingenuity. If we hadn't crushed her dreams. Snuffed yeah. out that flame, that spark. That entrepreneurial spirit. I'm sure she's going to do big things when she's out. I, it's a free idea. I won't even like, I won't even ask for a percentage. Like, please, somebody do it, okay? But if you, if someone made it, would you let this girl's husband use it? Oh, I forgot we were helping someone else. I so got sidetracked with my own issues. Uh, no. Agreed. Sorry, some things are just for the girls. Agreed. I sat on that. Thank you guys so much for listening to the Trust the Millennial Morning Show where we deliver the fast life stories you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching us on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We are also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found. So it's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, I Heart Radio, CastBox, all the places. Wherever you listen to podcasts, find us the Toast, leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and wickedly talented we are. Hope you guys have an amazing day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Love ya. Bye.